Hi, I'm Hugh Sullivan, videographer for the Herald and Review, and last week I talked about the importance of sound design in filmmaking and uh, what kind of difference it made when I was making my short film, The Grifter. And so this week I thought it'd be fun to talk about some of the problems that I ran into trying to shoot that film and uh, how I kind of got over those issues. So as I mentioned before, with this first shoot on the bench, uh, I was really prepared for it, had, uh, had a boom mic going into the camera, and then I also had two separate wireless lav mics that were uh, hidden under the actor's clothes. So I thought I was covered. But unfortunately, those wireless lav mics were giving off tons of interference. So when I was editing, I ended up, it was this horrible process where I had to bring all the audio tracks in under the clip and then mix and match. Okay, there's no wind in this shot from the boom mic, so I'll use that. There's wind here. Let me go down to this one. Okay, the lav mic is good. And then sometimes both of them messed up. We'd have pops from the lav mic and uh, wind on the boom mic. So I went into Adobe Audition and had to spend a bunch of time just trying to delete out all these pops. And luckily, once you fix all that and then throw in some seamless background noise and some music, it's barely noticeable. Next is the shoot that we had at Sloan's Calzones. I was really prepared going into this shoot too. I had a bunch of new equipment. I was trying out some, some new lighting arrangements so that I could work around with uh, two cameras and not have to reset light stands. And uh, I was so focused on that, somehow... I screwed up with my preamp. This is what I use to plug in professional XLR microphones into the 5D Mark II, but this little cable that connects them wasn't plugged in properly. So all my audio, it stopped right here. And this doesn't record into an SD card or anything, so pretty much all that boom mic audio was just garbage. And so what I ended up doing is had the actors come in and sit in this chair and talk into this microphone and do a little bit of ADR, which is... Uh, automated or uh, additional dialogue recording and basically it just means that the actors watched their take on screen and then tried to match up their voice into the microphone here at first it sounds ridiculous when you just have this plain voice over this uh this old clip that's cool i'll cover you but when you add in some room tone and sound effects and music it blends in perfectly so a big part of my filmmaking is the uh post-production and fine-tuning a lot of the audio and uh like I mentioned, you know, with the bench scene and the Sloan's Calzones scene, um, room tone played a big part in that. And any good director should get a lot of room tone while they're on the set. And that's a rule that I break all the time. I always forget to get the room tone, so I'm always going back out, which is why it's good to have a portable field recorder. If you're going to be doing filmmaking, this thing is a lifesaver. So I was able to go and sit out on a busy street and record that sit on a quiet street, get some of that sound, and then go over to Sloan's and get that uh, restaurant ambience. Now, I probably could have just searched for some sound effects and ambient sounds online, but I, I enjoy that part of the process. I like gathering up my own stuff, and I really like doing my own sound effects. When I was editing, I would just use this microphone, and I recorded the hand wiping, money counting, I think I can afford it. You can get me back next time. The candy wrapper, and a bunch of other sound effects that made it into the film. So I would pretty much just sit here and watch along with the film and do this, or I'd pick up a candy wrapper and try and match it up to the way he was grabbing at it, and uh, it worked out pretty well. But don't worry, because if you don't have the time or the equipment to do your own sound effects and make your own music, it's fine because there's tons of websites out there that have stuff for you to use in your films, and a lot of them are free. Okay, number one, and uh, by the way, I'm going to put all these links in the description so you can go and find them there. Uh, first, freemusicarchive.com is one of my favorites. You'll spend a lot of time searching through a lot of weird experimental stuff, but you can find some really cool stuff in here. I ended up using a lot of work by Jared Ballow in my short sketches because it fit the tone so well. Incompetech.com has a great stockpile of music from Kevin McLeod. This guy has a huge library of versatile music, and he uh, even shares in his frequently asked questions section why he gives it all away for free. And uh, I used a few of his songs for The Grifter. Freestockmusic.com and Jamendo.com are both websites that I just recently discovered, um, and they have some pretty cool stuff. I found those websites on creativecommons.org. They have a whole section on uh, free music, and uh, it's a great list, and I haven't had time to check those all out, but I'll put the link here. And I was also surprised at how good YouTube's free music and sound effect library was. I used that for my sketch, Moving Day. And while I haven't signed up for the site or tried downloading anything yet, I'm really interested in Moby Gratis, the site where Moby has uh, made a selection of over 150 tracks from his catalog of music uh, available to license for free via a simple online application system. 
So that's taken right from his website. I don't know exactly what it means, but I thought it was really neat. And just recently, I was introduced to a really cool website called freesound.org from the 21 Film Project winner, Dear Norma Blotch. Uh, the director used that website for all of her sound effects. The website actually reminded me a lot of flashkit.com, which isn't the best website, but there's some hidden gems of uh, music loops and sound effects, but a lot of them are homemade and not very good. And finally, there's videoblocks.com. This isn't a free site, but they do offer a seven-day trial, which is pretty great. They have graphics, stock footage, After Effects templates, and a bunch more. I got my out-of-town footage for the grifter from this site. Just beware, you need to use a credit card to sign up, but if you deactivate your account, you won't have to pay the nearly $80 a month fee. So hopefully these websites work well for you. Uh, if I missed any obvious choices, uh, let me know, because I'd always be happy to add some to my library and, and go searching for some new uh, stock music and, and sound effects. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to this channel. Go check out my personal channel where I have all my filmmaking. And as always, check back every week where I talk about my experiences behind the camera. Thank you.